delighted to say, as promised, we're joined live by Michelle St. Patrick Hewitt from the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, who has had a busy week. When doesn't he have a busy week talking about matters West Indian cricket? Let's begin, shall we, Mash, with um, the Darren Bravo story and uh, Desmond Haynes uh, explaining the omission of Bravo, who then said that he would take a break from cricket, he obviously took his exclusion um very personally which is always a bad move i find in cricket selection but um yeah i mean i i heard you say three times that you didn't want to diss desmond haynes uh before going on to diss him and listen <laughs> thanks first things first thanks for having me on um I try to, I try my best to be to be balanced in these scenarios, but um, with the greatest of respects uh, to to Desmond Haynes, and I really mean that. I think he's, I think there's somewhat of a misstep misstep with this particular decision. I think fans on the whole have been willing to back him in most of the decisions he's made, but. What he's done with the Darren Bravo situation is I've got no problem actually with omitting Darren Bravo if the selection criteria was made clear prior to your domestic tournament, right? So similarly for England, if the, you have the Royal London One Day Cup and whatever other formats are deemed relative or relevant, sorry, to picking an England ODI side, if it's clear that at 34 years old you are no longer applicable for international cricket or an ODI side, make that clear prior to Darren Bravo going on to score the most runs in the domestic tournament that directly leads into West Indies ODI selection. And it's caused quite a furore in West Indies cricket simply because there's players who have been selected who are one year younger than him or 18 months younger than him. And it just, there's too many question marks about it. And by no means am I suggesting that Darren Bravo is the answer to fixing West Indies woes. <laughs> if, if that if that was the answer, then it's obviously been staring us in the face all this time. But I think when you're a side like the West Indies, I, with such a shallow talent pool, I just don't understand why you'd almost shoot yourself in the foot, so to speak, when you have an experienced player that can maybe help mould some of these younger players that we're being told that we're investing in. I mean, England are investing in some some younger players, but do you jettison experience completely when you claim that you're investing in younger players? I, I just don't think it's a wise strategy. Yeah, and, it, and you you look at it. Do you, do you think it's it's there's a personal element to this because you, you're England are looking at two years time in the Champions Trophy. The West Indies have got obviously aren't in that, so it's going to be four years time. Um, so you can see them going from a for the for the younger model, but. You've got to build something. You need a concrete foundation, and surely that's got to be with experienced players and helping youngsters mould them into the next phase of, of what you're trying to achieve, which is your know, qualifications for the next World Cup. Do you think there's a personal element between Gaines, the West Indies selectors, and obviously Darren Bravo? Do you know what? I, I, I'm, as the lead selector, um, Desmond Haynes has to take the pelters. Right. But there's actually four people in the selection group. There's Desmond Haynes, there's Roland Butcher, there's Shea Hope as the ODI captain, and then there's um, Darren Sammy as the ODI coach. So as much as Des, uh, as much as Des has taken the pelters for it, for all we know, he just got outvoted. For all we know, he wasn't actually in the majority um, uh, group, so to speak, or, or quorum within that kind of four to say, let's exclude Darren Bravo. But then he's got to go to the public and come up with the explanation as to as to why Darren Bravo um, has been has been omitted. But as you say, Harmi, yeah, West Indies got four years to, to plan for. But again, I just think it's short sighted. Right. So what's the what's the plan to are we are we going to be winning for four years straight? Um, like where. As things currently stand, South Africa and Zimbabwe will go to the World Cup automatically, right? Um, and then it's the next best eight teams. That doesn't include the West Indies. I looked at the rankings. The, the next team above West Indies, if we were to overhaul them, is Afghanistan. And even to do that, we'd have to go on an unbelievable run of OGI cricket form, which we haven't shown in about 10 years, to somehow overturn that gap between us and Afghanistan. So the chances are... We're going to the World Cup qualifiers again in, in 2026 to try and get to 2027. 
And uh, granted, it's a an, it's an expanded uh, World Cup this time. So you'd think that West Indies could take one of the four places on offer outside of the automatic qualifiers. But we saw what happened in the last ones. Netherlands beat us. Scotland beat us. So, so, so it's not like we can take the qualifiers for granted. So I just think it's it doesn't make a lot of sense to say we're building to 2027 when actually we have to win now. We, we have to develop a winning mentality now. We can't just wait till 2027 and hope it all clicks. Um, so I, I just feel it's short-sighted. Okay, three questions in one here. Um, first of all, uh, a year or two ago, you said you'd be happy never to see Shimron Hetmeyer in a West Indies shirt again when he couldn't make it to the airport in time for a World Cup. Um, so is that repaired, his, his, uh, that, his relationship? Alzari Joseph as vice captain uh, fascinates me and third where's O'Shane Thomas been for the last couple of years huh. every single one of those questions is a podcast in itself let me let me uh, first and foremost I realized I didn't directly answer Harmy's question so I'll just quickly say is it personal Harmy I'll just say to that that there's no there's not the, the evidence for cricket logic in this decision is sceptical. So it makes us think it may be a bit personal. Who knows? So Shimon Hetmeyer, um, he has been recalled from the wilderness. Um, he came back for the India series and didn't perform. Um, I think he failed three times in the ODIs. In the recent domestic Super 50, he failed seven times out of eight. And by failed, I mean scores under 20. I think he got 150. So he's not in good form. Um, but... <laughs> Shimon Hetmeyer is too talented and our talent pool is too shallow to just not persist with him. Um, so we're going to have to persist with him. I don't know how long uh, the length of rope is that he's got to keep on failing, but it's almost like we're in a position where now he's back. We don't dare drop him because he could easily just turn his back on West Indies cricket again. So if, if anything, all the powers with Shimron. It's not actually with the selectors. Um, we almost need him more than he needs us, if that makes any sense. So um, that's why he's back. Alzari Joles, if they see captaincy potential in. So Alzari was actually a uh, captain at schools level um, in uh, it's Antigua. Um, he was captain in schools level. Uh, Leeward Islands made the decision this year to give him the captaincy in Super 50. He captained them to the runners-up position in the tournament. So they clearly see um, captaincy material in him. His exterior doesn't suggest that. Obviously, he's kind of, he gives off like a bit of a surly, moody exterior. But from speaking to all the players <laughs> in the Leeward Islands uh, team that got uh, the runners-up position, they look up to him. They see him as a good um, a leader of men. And West Indies have rewarded him Um uh, with 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 the vice captaincy, does that mean he'll one day be a West Indies captain? Who knows? But um, it's good to see them trying to elevate um, youngsters into and mould them as as, as leaders. Um, and the third one was uh, I'm trying to remember what your third one was. O'Shane uh, Thomas. O'Shane Thomas. O'Shane Thomas. Right. So O'Shane Thomas um, <laughs> has had historic issues around fitness. Um, he has struggled to maintain. The, the optimum weight um, in international cricket and conditioning that would allow him to excel at the highest level. As I understand it, um, as kind of almost in, almost in tune with or adjacent to the fact that a lot of his T20 contracts started to dry up, and around that time, he started to realise, I need to take my cricket more seriously. I heard stories about him hiring a personal trainer and so on and so forth. He came over to... England to play some league cricket. I can't remember the name of the team off the top of my head, but he played some league cricket. And the Cricket West Indies, like SNC coaches, gave him like um, kind of like a routine that he had to follow whilst playing league cricket over here. And the idea is, is that they have basically said to O'Shane, we are willing to invest in you. At the end of the day, O'Shane Thomas at his apt absolute optimum bowls 90 plus. Any... And Harmy well knows, but any international team that has a bowler that has the potential to bowl 90 plus, you've got to harness that. And what they've effectively said to O'Shane is, we'll work with you as long as it takes to get you back to where you need to be. Is he there yet? No, but he, he, he was in the India series, didn't play any games, but was just in camp. 
So I guess it helped that he was in a high performance camp alongside the first team training day in, day out. He's just played with the Leeward Islands in the uh, Super 50 tournament. And I think this is all part of a process. He still doesn't look like the old Shane who burst on the scene, but he is cranking 90 plus again. His radar is slowly getting back to where it needs to be. So suffice to say, I would expect him to play some games against England and I'd expect him to bowl a few snorters. Whether he can put that together in a 10-over spell, well, that remains to be seen, but he's on the he's on the road to recovery, so to speak. Yeah, we've seen him in, I think it was 2019 when we were over there. He literally bowled every lunchtime and every every tea time. And I think, you know, the, the S&C coaches were around him and he, and he looked... He, he's a big lad. He's never going to be a small lad. He's always going to be a big lad. He's never going to, from a visual point of view, look as though he's going to he's going to be a Usain Bolt and run 100 metres in, in nine and a half seconds. But when we've seen him bowling, you have to persevere with him. You have to give him mm. you know, the, the, everything that you, you can because when you've seen him in the, in the white ball series after that, he was a handful and he is a real mm. handful. So from that point of view, Oh, then that comes on to my next question about the, where the West Indies at from a, a strength point of view going into the T20 World Cup, which is not far away and you're less than sort of eight months away. Will somebody like other West Indies invested in that because they see O'Shane Thomas as a key cog in, in bowling 90 plus miles an hour, even just for four overs? Because from a franchise point of view, yes, he's possibly lost his way. But from a West Indies point of view, like you said before about the talent pool, you're going to need bowlers of that type to stand up and be counted if you want to have some, some reckoning in this T20 World Cup coming. Yeah, 100%. And I think what they, um, the reason why they're prepared to invest in O'Shane, and I hope they stay the course with him, is that it's, it's, it's at his best, he's an X-factor bowler. And I think that's what it's about. It's about, yeah. particularly in the shorter formats, who can you turn to that can offer something that other cricketers can't, right? So if, you, if you've got a mystery spinner, you've got a mystery spinner. If you've got a brilliant leg spinner, you've got a brilliant leg spinner. But in the West Indies, we've only got Alzari Joseph, who can bowl um, 90 plus, do the kind of enforcer spell, the person you turn to to magic a wicket out of nothing. In O'Shane, they have another bowler who could, who could do that. And I think they've weighed up the kind of costs and benefits and said, well, if we can get him back to his best, there are few international teams that would want to face a new ball pair of Alzari Joseph and O'Shane Thomas, both going at, at 90 plus if, and the if is so big, if they can get O'Shane back to what he can be. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.